Hey guys, Khali from Cricket Fanatics Magazine here and another special episode of the Unlockdown series. Today, I'm bringing on someone that I'm really a big fan of. Um, when he was a lot younger and I just came into the cricket scene, he's one of the first kind of players that I um, wrote a feature on when I was still at my previous employees. And um, I, I really enjoyed researching and obviously the time that I did get to watch him play, it wasn't too many times, but the times that I did watch him play, I enjoyed, really enjoyed it. So... I'm going to welcome Lewis Deploy on the on the show. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Khalid. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So this is going to be awesome. Um, I'm really excited about this one. As we do with every single episode, the first thing that we do is we talk to you about a little bit about lockdown and obviously with this crisis that's happening at the moment. What have you been up to? What's the restrictions like where you are? And um, how have you kept fit and healthy, etc.? And keeping your cricket skills sharp. If you have been yeah i think um the lockdown has has been a very interesting one for all of us um it's it's been a bit different in england i think than it is in south africa i'd much rather be locked down in south africa when you have the luxury of um, having a yard and and all that in, in england as you know uh, the space is very limited over here oh. so i've only got a, an apartment that i that i live in um, which is fine. I mean, I've, I've tried to make it work the best I can. At least we get we get an hour um, to go outside and go for a jog and stay fit where you can. But there's only so much that you can do. Um, I'm a big believer in, you know, trying to stay happy mentally. Um, I think physically I'll have enough time to prepare um, as well as I sh should be. Uh, you know to be fit for for the season if we are lucky enough to start yeah um but i've just tried to say um you know mentally fit rather um and that's just trying to acquire a few new skills i've got into um juggling a bit uh i always <laughs> i've always enjoyed juggling but i've i've uh, uh, i had a bit of spare time to try a few new tricks and, and so on and uh i've, I've always enjoyed spanish uh, so stuff like that, I've, you know, I've, I've had the opportunity now to just touch base with it and, and get a better with a few things. Oh, that's awesome. Um, juggling, like um, for how long have you been doing that? Um, Khalid, I've just lost you there. Uh, the sound's gone off. Oh, can you not hear me? Uh, let me just, Ooh, I don't know. I can't, I can't hear you. Not at all. Um, okay. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's happening. Sad. It's off now. Okay, you can you can try again there? No, it's can you, off completely. Can you maybe can you take off your maybe to remove your earphones? I think it was working when we um I'm gonna sort of private chat you quickly, message you quickly. Um Cool. Can you hear me now? I've just turned on the turned off the Bluetooth. Can you, can you, can hear, you hear me now? I can hear you. Can you hear me? No, it's no no sound. Cool. Let me just try again. Um, nothing still. It's very weird. <laughs> um, still nothing. Sorry guys, we're just gonna we have some issues with the sound. Um, just I've, uh, I've just turned it on and off. Um, I still can't hear anything. You still can't hear anything. Um, I don't know how to contact you. Let me just. Can you see this? Um, Just leave the stream and come back in. No, no, I got nothing. Yeah, okay. Um, sorry, guys. Um, these oh, This always happens with regards to technical glitches on his side. So we're going to sort it out now. 
Um, I know you guys can hear us, but it's going to be difficult for me to have a conversation with Leo, Leo CV. He can't hear me. Um, so I'm just going to message him quickly. So guys, you can start getting your questions in, in the comment section. And obviously, then we will obviously talk to Lewis about it and, and pose it to Lewis and ask him a few questions from you guys. So um, we're going to try this again. It's back. Can you hear me? Is there absolutely no sound on your side now? Oh, what is going on? Um, there's nothing from your side. Okay. Try try again. <laughs> guys so you can start getting your um questions in the comment section um we tried to sort out the things from his side i think we'll it should work now can you can you hear me perfect yeah i can hear you <laughs> all right cool so we're just going to go back to what i said earlier on um i'll ask yeah. you the question and then yeah yeah cool so, Lewis, you spoke a little bit about for the guys that missed out, we had some technical issues. So, we're just basically going to talk from the beginning. Basically, he gave us some insight into what he's doing on lockdown. You guys can go back and watch that. Um, but, Lewis, for regards to your juggling, I want to know how long have you been doing that? <laughs> um, yeah, so I've started juggling probably uh, like towards the end of my high school career. Uh, but it was always just very basic, sort of just, uh, you know, trying to get my eye in uh, the old cliche before uh, going out to bat. So I've always been doing that before I go out to bat because I hate, I hate sitting still before before batting. Um, so, yeah, I've just got into doing a few tricks now and you know, moving on to four balls, which is really, really cool. I really enjoy it. Um, it's something that keeps me busy and just uh, helps me a bit with the, uh, the hand-eye coordination. Yeah, I mean, four balls is difficult. Uh, three balls I can just about do, but four balls is incredibly difficult. <laughs> no, you'll be you'll be surprised. It's a, it, it just takes time. Uh, if you can do three balls, I'm pretty sure you can do four balls. It just takes time and a lot of patience. A lot of patience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see uh, in the comment section that um, Prasad says that he's also mastered three, jug uh, three ball juggling in this lockdown. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's it, it really is addictive. Eh? Um, I think well, I've, I've set my goal to to do five balls when the lockdown's done. So um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully I can do that before going out to bat. Yeah, hopefully you can send us that video when you do master that. That would be awesome. We can post it on our platform to give them an update. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, I'd love to. Um, so so let's let's go into your history a little bit more. Um, I like to know how your journey started with cricket, especially because a lot of guys start as cricket fanatics first, and that's why they play the game. Um, not all of us are lucky enough to be able to go and play at, at higher levels and go play professionally. But where did it all start for you? How were you introduced to cricket? And where did, it, where did the journey start for you? Yeah, so that's a very good question. I, um, I come from a very, like, rugby based family um my my family my the majority of my family come from a small town in Pumalanga called Omelo mm -hmm. so um yeah they didn't really have cricket there um so my dad didn't know much about cricket uh, but the first time I really got exposed to cricket was my two uncles and it was on the farm um and they gave me this uh, this short handle bat that I couldn't even pick up I was about I was about five six years old and they just kept you know, bouncing me and, you know, you know, toughening me up at, at that age. And for some reason, I just really liked it. Um, 
I just liked all aspects of it uh, and and I got into it pretty quickly and um, you know rag rugby was always was always the number one sport going up uh, until probably about nine ten years old and then from there cricket just took over um, that's all I wanted to do I just wanted to play cricket um, I remember um, you know I was lucky enough to sort of have a, have a playroom in my house and um, I used to just make up scenarios um, about and South Africa would always win by the way you know I'd, <laughs> I'd, uh, I would mimic all the actions like like every kid would do I would know every single player from every single country um, and then I'd have these series uh, very competitive <laughs> and I'll, I, 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 I remember having this book um, writing down every single stat um, of how my how my games went and um, it's just something that that's always just uh, captured me and and really fascinated me yeah that's amazing so um, who are some of the players that you you faced you know in those games <laughs> Um, oh yeah, the, the, I, I was I loved doing Andrew Hall's action and Andre Nell's action was, was brilliant. I got into it. Um, and Andre Nell probably laugh if you if you had listened to this. Um, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed doing Nella. Makai Antini was always a, a very easy one to do with the with the hands going up like that. Um, Sean Pollock was a, was a classic. Uh, yeah, it was. It just it brings back a lot of fond memories. Cool, that's awesome. So, um, also let's talk about your your high um, school career, um, what that was like, and obviously high school because that's kind of where most cricketers, that's where their careers take off. Really, um, that sort of really make defines people's careers. Give me some insight into that and some of the best memories that you had during high school. Yeah, um, it was a big tussle to to reach high school. Um, I was going to go to. I really wanted to go to a, a school called uh, Minla Park. Miller Park High School, and there's a lot of good cricketers that also came from there. Um, but luckily, I didn't have a choice, uh, so I went to Afis, Afrikaans Words here in school, um, which my, my dad made that, that choice for me, and I'm, I'm really thankful for it because, you know, as, as a grade seven kid, you, you sometimes think that, you know, um, you've sort of made it, um, and you, you walk into school like Afis, and you're just another number. Um, and, and and I mean that in, in the best of ways because mm. it, it's it's really the the thing you need at, at that age. You, you need to be grounded. Um, yeah. So I, I walked into school there, and we, we had a great under fourteen team. I remember that's probably one of the best teams I've ever played played for. Um, and I was lucky enough. To, uh, yeah, it's 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 not names that you would know now, but uh, Drian. Rivera played um, in on the ninety World Cup. They they won the World Cup that year. But there's there's just a lot of names that played in the uh, the Northerns uh, under thirteen team. Um, but that's that's the best team I've played for. We I think us we lost one game that whole year, um, and it was out of like I think forty odd games. So um, it was uh, yeah it was a really great year, um, and uh, I was lucky enough to be pulled up to the first team. And uh, you know you have this great expectation because uh, you have guys like A. B. de Villiers shirts hanging on the walls. You got Faf Du Plessis, Jock Rudolph, Heineken, Neil Wagner now playing for New Zealand. You know all these names. Uh, just it just it's quite intimidating. I'm not going to lie. Mm. Um, so that that was something I, I really aspired to to become, and. It was really an ultimate goal for me to have one of my shirts up on those walls. So it was quite a humbling feeling going back and to go watch my little brother a few years ago playing for the first team. And, and you know, you stand in that clubhouse and you're like, wow, like your shirt's there. Um, it, it's, it's, it's quite a humbling feeling. Um, did you ever experience, like you mentioned, um, Faf and, and AB, I don't know if when you were at school, did they ever come? To the school and maybe gave some speeches or um, some words of advice to you guys. I th I would say they they were really involved or as as involved as they possibly can be. Um, I remember Neil Wagner uh, came to our house before a, a very important game against Waterkloof. Um, he came and and did a so, sort of like a inspirational type of speech thing and, and he showed us some some videos of, 
of, of which really helped him in, in times that he needed some inspiration. I remember Faf also coming um, to the house uh, with all the team there. We, we used to have a lot of uh, team gathering before, like important games and so on. Um, and then I was lucky enough also to to meet A.B. de Villiers um, at the age of 12. And uh, yes, he's he's just got so much time for, for people. Um, I've got, he's my hero, uh, he's my mentor and he's got so much respect for, for everyone. Um, you know, I, I haven't come across anyone that has said that he's not a nice person. And I think that's the most important thing. If, if you can treat people with respect off the field, um, it just makes your life a lot easier on the field. Wow. So obviously being at Afis, we know it's a boys' school and it's quite a competitive boy a scene of um, boys' cricket and high school cricket. It can be quite competitive. You have a lot of rivals, etc. Some other big um, schools like Kes that you will probably play against, etc. And so what are some of the who are some of the opposition that you faced that you really were like had good battles with and enjoyed watching playing from the other sides? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say boys I was in that because they were right across the school uh, from us. So um, we had fierce rivals uh, every year. Um, I, I remember we just had some kryptonite playing at at their field. It was their fortress. Um, and I remember in grade 11 when we finally beat them there. It was it was an amazing feeling. Um, but I mean, it's, it's hard to single out one school because... We're very fortunate in, in South Africa. I mean, you, you, ranging from up north, you know, in Gauteng, all the way down to the Cape, we've got so many good schools. And, um, you know, that's that's one thing that I forgot to say earlier is when I went to Afis, um, it just gave me the opportunity to to really play against the best of the best in the country. And um, I think it really prepared me so well for, for try, well, trying to make it after school. Um, can you mention maybe some of the names that you played against that were that you had good battles with? Yeah, um, yeah. The, the first big name I'd, I'd say is probably Quentin Cock. Um, I remember him just smashing us all over the park. Um, Kakiso Rabada was was also another name I've played many many a times against. Uh, Aiden Markram, uh, he was yeah he was a year above me. Uh, very good player, very very good player. Um, and his, his career has been excellent thus far. Uh, who are the other big names? Um, Zubai Hamza. Uh, he's, he's, he was Ronda Bosch's king and Dian Khalim. That, that's such a great team uh, at one stage, Ronda Bosch. Um, Dennis De Bruyne was also another guy. I mean, it's, it's really hard. I mean, I can, I can probably sit here with you yeah. and, and uh, you know, go through all the names. It's... it's um, yeah, it's it's amazing to think of it. I mean, those those guys have really stamped their authority on the highest level, and I'd love to do that one day. Yeah, um, I mean, with regards to Kahiso Rabada, a lot of people don't know what it was like at school. Um, but from a what was it? What was the difficult part about facing someone of his quality, and what was he like at the school level? Yeah, I think the obvious answer is obviously his pace. <laughs> I think um, in his school lighty that um rocks up to a game and he knows he's going to face someone that's going to bowl 145 plus and that was honestly what he bowled and um, you know you know look look looking back at it today you know I, I face guys today and i'm like yo this this is exactly what he bowled and if not quicker uh, you know back at, in the school days and i remember playing a game for Norlands. Uh, it was under seven like an under 17 warm-up game against Gauteng. It was at at uh, Synthidians, and they didn't have any side screens. And um, Synthidians had these red uh, walls, like these brick walls at the back. And he's just steaming in. We couldn't see a, a bloody thing. Um, it was it was an it was an absolute nightmare. So, yeah, I think I think just the raw pace. Um, you know, as a schoolboy. It can be really intimidating, but you know, luckily I've I've always really enjoyed the challenge. I've really enjoyed the pace. Um, I'd much rather face someone that bowls really quickly than someone that bowls doubly doublers. Um, that you know, as 
that has got a lot of skill and uh, it makes it makes it tough for me i'm not saying that robotic doesn't have skill i mean he's, he's definitely got skill and pace and all those things um that's why he's the best in the world um but normally you know the stigma is if someone has a lot of pace it's it's a lot harder to be skillful so um question about that is that um yeah steaming in with rabada and etc and playing against all those players um but what i always want to ask is about our school level here in south africa um at the moment there's not a lot of opportunities for the kids to play longer format cricket was there opportunities for you guys to play that because we can see in england um there's youngsters that play county second division club cricket um already playing longer longer formats of the game um what sort of opportunities were there then yeah i'd say it, it was a lot more focused on on time cricket and um i was lucky enough to play uh, a few three-day games not not even senior provincial cricket i'm just talking about in school cricket we had a few three-day games um for northerns and i remember in for office we had about two or three two-day games you know that um so i think that that prepares you really well for first loss level and i think it's something you need because you can only get better if you play more um and you can only learn to to bat better if you bat more and spend time in the middle you can only get better bowling was if you bowl more um it's as simple as that and yes t20 is a great game and um i've learned to really enjoy it um and everyone enjoys watching it um but the purest form of the game would still be first class cricket or test cricket so um it, it would be a pity if if cricket south africa move in a direction to take away that um i don't know how it, how it stands at the moment but i really do hope that they they put a lot of emphasis on it because you know south africa take a lot of pride in their test cricket and that's the only way that we can prepare our, our school boys to to become better test cricketers mm. so obviously after that um you had the opportunity to obviously play franchise cricket um for two different franchises of course um tell me about that journey what that was like um obviously doing that yeah i think um yeah, I was <laughs> I was lucky to to make my debut against uh, the Titans. Uh, it was it was very intimidating. I'm not gonna lie. Um, uh, it was it was a great um, experience being called up. Um, I'm not I'm not gonna say it, it wasn't because it, it was an amazing feeling getting that call from Nicky Boya saying that I'm 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 gonna be playing the next game and it's against the place that I've been brought up and the Titans. They were my team, um, you know, from school days. Um, so that, that was a really cool experience, but also very intimidating because I don't think I was quite ready. Um, you know, in, in Bloemfontein, um, you know, things can happen really quickly. Um, uh, and and it, and it did. I think it happened a bit quicker than I thought it would. Um, so, yeah, it, it was it was really cool uh, facing Marshanda Langer. Uh, also, once again, he was he's bowling 150, um, you know, Riza Hendricks at, at that stage was, was at the Knights, and you know I, I I really looked up to him. He was he was our best player at that stage, um, and I just remember him getting pinned, you know, in the first over, and I was like, "Geez, all right, it's game on here. <laughs> this is uh this is not senior provincial cricket, this." Um, and I remember Shana, my my first ball. I think I think it is still on on Google. Um, an image of me jumping about that high in the air, blocking the ball with my eye closed. Um, <laughs> And uh, after the over, I was uh, I was batting with fight, and and as all batsmen do, you know, you come to the middle. I was speechless coming to coming to the middle after the over to have a chat, and my Shantalanga goes and picks me up and puts me on the other side of the wicket. Literally picks me up and walks with me and put, puts me on the other side of the wicket. I, I'll never ever forget that. And uh, yeah, we we're still laughing about it because um, he came to the nights after that, and uh, yeah, we had a few laughs about that. Yeah, um, obviously, when I look at your stats, I mean, during through the years playing in South Africa, um, I mean, it's quite incredible. Um, uh, starting off in South Africa with 46 average, then obviously, um, then you went 2016-17 season with a 48 average, um, 54 average in 2017-18, average of, average of 62 uh, before you went, to, the season before you left to England, I mean, remarkable remarkable stats 
um you made the decision to obviously go over to england um and as an overseas player um can you maybe give us a little bit of insight into the reasons for that and what your time has been like in england settling in in a new country um a new system um etc yeah i think um south africa has prepared me really well um because I, i think that you know the, the environment in, in south africa is, is is a really tough one for numerous reasons um you know i think if, if you can make it in south africa you can make it anywhere and and i love the mentality of south africans i, I really think that we are brought up mentally really tough um and uh, it was great to be a part of and i'm lucky to have have done reasonably well too during my time there um and i'd love to play there again you know if if the opportunity arises um but yeah the the decision going to england uh, was a very tough one because remember it, it's not only cricket it's it's not that's not the only reason you make the decision you know I've, i've got a girlfriend in cape town at the moment which you know it's things things you need to you need to consider i've got a family i'm I, i'd like to believe that you know i make a lot of time for my family so it's it's all those things that you know you need to consider making a, a decision like that and um the opportunities that i've that i've had in in england have have just been um a breath of fresh air and you know i really felt that um i can just play my game and play with a lot of um with a lot of freedom in a way and you know i'm not saying that that south africa um sort of shackled me in a way but i know it, it, it i think it just um, depends on each individual you know some people can can really um take ev- every environment and make it make it their own and do the best that they can and i've got so much respect for those people um that can make it in south africa that's awesome um but uh, you know i was i was fortunate to get to have that opportunity in england and you know uh luckily i've really enjoyed it yeah and obviously you averaged um in the last se- in the last se- season i'm 40 um i'm looking at that stats obviously it's not that's not all that is about cricket i think there's a lot of other aspects that involved but oh, stats are a good um determination to see what your career is like and averaging 42 last season must have been really great for you in a longer format um uh, what i want to ask you is the standard between the two um domestic um cricket in south africa and england there's a lot of um debate happening at the moment in with amongst our fans etc and amongst us as peers i have long long conversations with one with ravi and dan with two guys that are in the comments and also two guys that work with me about what standard is better is the standard the same etc so can you uh, will probably be like um one of our um comment uh, guys in the comments over here said um Sadiq he says you are probably the best person to actually give us that insight into what what the difference is like in the standard um, can you give us an insight into that yeah yeah you know, once i think that's a great question um because i was uh, i was also having those same debates when i was in south africa i was like cheese you know um our overseas guys going over to county cricket and and really dominating um and then i got here and i was like wow you know the standard is really good and it's amazing what your perception of 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 something can be sometimes um uh, i can honestly i can honestly tell you that the standard is pretty high yeah? um i would say that it that is as close as you'll get to franchise cricket um if not better because you know i always look at the international teams um england at the moment are in a very good place you know this i think these structures are very settled you know for it's been coming for a few years now um and i think it's a true reflection of the the domestic the domestic system um so i think you got to look at that um i think however that so africa is is definitely on you know on an uprise i think they've got good management in place and i think they um moving in the right direction yeah um which is really exciting to see but yeah coming back to your question uh, it's it's hard to say uh, who's got the best um mm. you know, or, or, or what is the best is it whether it's county cricket or franchise cricket I, i think it's really tough to to determine that um but i i would say you have to go look at you know what what your international teams are doing i think that's a true reflection cool so now we we're going to go into some of the questions from from the in the comment section 
this is the one that you need to be really prepared for because I like to ask some difficult questions. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll start with um, another one from Sadiq, and he wants to know, um, he says he remembers you bowling, opening the bowling for the Titans. Do you fancy your bowling more than your batting? Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, thanks for that, Sadiq. Um, uh, I would like to believe that I can um, end my career as being seen as an all-rounder, and I'm not going to give up on that dream, although everyone uh, likes uh, giving me a lot of banter about it. You know, at the... At, I just think that you know you, you can never you can never underestimate um, you, your your skill level in in different aspects of the game. Just like fielding is so important. Um, I mean, you have a guy like Heinrich Klaassen, you know that's that that keeps and he can bowl too. So I mean, it just gives you an extra uh, 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 you know extra option whether the cap the captain needs it or not it, at least he, you know you have it and i think that's one thing again i can give a lot of credit to south africa is you know you need to have that you need we grow up um knowing that we, we need to be very flexible and, and, and adaptable in certain conditions so hopefully i'll get the opportunity to open the bowling again thank you <laughs> <laughs> Uh, next one from him again. He says you scored 360 odd runs at 67 in six limited over games in England. Wow, someone can click info and tear apart the tax in Blast T20. Do you see yourself better as a limited overs player? Uh, it's a very good question. Um, I, before I went to England, I told myself that T20 cricket is probably the one format that I'd say I have to improve the most on. And uh, one day cricket, I'd, I'd, I'd always say, was was my strength for some reason. I don't know. I think it's because we played a lot of school cricket. You know, you you are used to playing one day cricket, how to set up games and how to win games. Um, so, uh, yeah, T20 cricket is, is always my biggest challenge. Um, but, yeah, I, I think I've, I've grown into to really loving that and loving the challenges it presents. Um, you know, I've, I've batted four last year. Um, I don't know if, if you saw, and you know, before before that in South Africa, I, I was always opening or, or or batting three in T20s, and now I've I've learned to enjoy number four, and really you know owning that spot. Um, you know, we we have a great batsman that I can look up to over the years, uh, Wayne Matson. Um, most of the South African guys won't know him, but you know he's a he's a fantastic role model, and um, I really do enjoy batting with him. He's 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 a bit of a freak sometimes. Um, and I enjoy learning from him. Cool. Um, we've got one from Ravi. Um, with the Colpac rules potentially changing, would you consider playing for SA if the opportunity was provided to you? Yeah, it's, it's a tough question, that. Because, um, uh, like I said to Khalid earlier, is that, um, you know, I've I've really enjoyed my cricket over here thus far. If, you know, if it, if it does happen that, you know, one day I'll wake up and, you know, I find myself having to make that decision. I, I'm pretty sure it's something that I'll, you know, I'll, I'll take into consideration because you know I'll, I'll always have a very soft spot for South Africa, and, and I'll always love my country. Um, you know, and, and every every kid uh, that that loves cricket and, and wants to make it a professional career wishes to play at the highest level, and that's all I want to do. Awesome, that's an awesome answer, and. Um... He has another follow-up, but it's it's more about how you have adjusted in England and was playing cricket in another country a, diff, a big of a, a bit of a learning curve. It obviously was, but can you maybe give us some insight into why it was and what about it really taught you a lot about your game? Yeah, I, I think um, it's it's helped me in a lot of ways. Um, I, I'm going to first touch on the first loss cricket, uh, four-day cricket, as you know. In England, we play with Dukes. Um, it's something that I had to get used to pretty quickly. Um, I was lucky enough when, when I came over, I started to finish my South African season. So I sort of just jumped straight into the one-day comp, which they play with uh, Kuka Turfs, same as in franchise cricket. So that wasn't an adjustment at all. But the, the first source cricket was a very big adjustment to me because, you know, you have to watch the ball so much more carefully uh, over here. And you have to adjust your game um, you know, the ball stays hard for 80 overs. You, you can even get the ball swinging a mile in over 70. 
Um, you have guys like Jimmy Anderson, Stuart Broad running in at you on a on a green seamer, um, and then you've got to find a way to to negotiate that. So I think my my game has improved a lot. Um, in South Africa, I would never ever say that. I would have been able to open the batting over there. I don't think my technique was nearly sound enough to do anything like that. Um, but I can honestly say that, you know, after playing a season in England and, and hopefully a few more, that I'll I'll be able to open the batting in, in places like South Africa. Cool. Um, another one from Sadiq. He says, you scored 140 odd versus Sri Lanka in 2016 and 86 against Aussies in 2019. Which was your better innings and how was that experience? Uh, it's well, it's tough to choose the better one, but I'll, I'll tell you what is the, the most pivotal one. And, and that was the one against Sri Lanka. Um, and, and funny enough, I, I actually spoke about it yesterday, is that, you know, at, at that stage in my life um, and, and my career, I was, I was really short of confidence. And I, I was really doubtful in whether I can score against guys of the best quality and at that stage Sri Lanka had the number one test bowler in the world uh, Rangana Herath and you know so to score 100 against them it just gave me that confidence to really propel me into the right direction in my career um, so I'd say that one was the most important to me um, but the one against uh, Australia was was uh, very very enjoyable um, you know, luckily for us, the wicket was was a tad on the slower side because <laughs> Mitchy Stark was yeah he was running in with the wind. Um, it was it was a good challenge, uh, but luckily coming from South Africa, you you face a lot of pace bowlers. Um, so uh, you know, once again, I, I'd I'd much rather face Mitchell Stark than facing a guy like Peter Siddle. Um, where, you know that that does a lot more with the ball. Um, it's a lot tougher for me. Mm -hmm. And um, Daniel has a cool question: Is why do you think some Colpac players get more stick from South African fans compared to others? Yeah, I think it's just because we are so proud. We we are a proud nation, and and um, that's awesome. You know, I, I really enjoy that. I, I think you have to be loyal, um, and it's great to see that we have loyal fans. Um, we are always gonna, as Colpac players, you know, I haven't spoken to one overseas South African over here that's you know not got something good to say about South Africa and I think that's a very important message to all the fans out there in South Africa is that you know although we we pursue our careers over here is that like it's 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 just it's a decision we had to make and and um, you know it's 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 not just a cricket decision like I said to you earlier is you know it's a very big decision so you know, I, th I think it's very important for fans to, although we are loyal um, as cricket fans in South Africa, um, it's important to respect those, those decisions also because um, it's it's not just cricket and, and we need to realise that. Mm -hmm. Awesome answer. So here's a little bit of a fun one from Ravi. You must really be missing prize right now. Have you coped in England? The, how have you coped in England this whole time without Burvos? <laughs> Oh, I miss it so much. Um, I, I get a picture on, on our family group every now and then. Um, like uh, I'm missing out on, on the T-bone steak or, um, you know, you know, like a winner with your braai. I'll be vier keres. Yeah, I miss it a lot. I, I, I really do miss that life. Um, that's always the, the, the South African part that will never, ever go away. Um, and I can assure you that if I do get back to South Africa, I don't know when, when it's going to be with this lockdown. I'm definitely, the first night, I'm going to have a steak. Absolutely. I'm going to have a thick steak, medium rare, um, with a bit of pup. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that'll, that'll be me. Cool. Uh, give, me some, give me some insight into what life is like in England um, off the field. Um, disconnecting. Yeah, I'll ask it again. Um, so, um, just just give me some insight into what it's like to be um, off the field in, in England. What it's like, what life life is like there, and um, what sort of things you get up to for fun. Um, and 
how it's been like to settle in with a, a bunch of new guys with, with different culture, etc. And it's a different lifestyle completely, obviously, being a first world country compared to South Africa. Yeah, you, you mentioned it really quickly there. It's just a different culture. Um, and if you can learn to embrace that, just like everything in life, you can really make it fun. Um, <laughs> I can tell you it was very intimidating meeting all, all these guys for the first time because, um, you know, everyone probably thought, you know, who the bloody hell is this guy um, <laughs> walking into the change room and, you know, introducing himself with his South African accent. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's really rewarding if you, if you make time for, for and, and if, if you're open to, to making new friends and, and having new relationships um you know it's i think it's a skill to, to firstly do that you have to be you have to be brave and um and just open to to experience new things um you know obviously i'll, I'll always be a south african boy um and, and i always have my south african ways <laughs> and they take me apart apart for that um but yeah i've, I've enjoyed the culture in england and and uh, i've learned to enjoy um every, everything they, they have to offer over here and who is maybe some of the guys that you would say you learned the most from in the dressing room um, and from maybe just by watching them or by actual advice that they've given you? Yeah, so um, I'm lucky to have played with a few really awesome guys in Derbyshire. I'd start with the bowlers because um, they got us they got us to the, the T20 finals they last year. Um, and, and I'd say Ravi Rampal that played for... The West Indies. He was, he was quite a, a big factor in uh, contributing uh, to that campaign. Um, it's just amazing how simple he keeps it. Um, you know, you, you sometimes think these guys that have all these skill. You know, they have all, this, you know, unbelievable plans and. But it's just amazing how simple they keep it, and I think that's. A very important lesson I learned is, and, and, and that can help you in batting too, is you just have to keep it simple. Um, you know, have your clear plans and you stick to that. It's amazing what success that'll bring. Um, and then from a batting point of view, I, I'd probably say Billy Godelman, our captain, and, and Wayne Madsen have really been a pivotal role um, in me developing as a cricketer. They are two very different players. So, I mean, Billy, Billy can be ranging from you know batting at a strike rate of of 60 in one cricket to uh batting at a strike rate of 150 you know and, and i find it so fascinating because you know he's just got the switch um and and speaking a, lo a lot to him um last season it's it's amazing how he thinks about the game and um opportunities that he sees to 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 pounce on on someone that's weak and uh, you know went to hold back a bit more it's 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 really it's fascinating things that, I, that i've learned and wayne madsen is just i mean he's the absolute shot maker um if if any of you listening to this please go do yourself a favor and and uh, go see some of the shots that he plays he he's a south african boy from durban uh, he went to kersney college uh, a few years ago um, but he's he's an exceptional talent. Uh, also, an, another guy, a South African guy, that you know found a lot of success over here in England, um, and an absolute gem gem of a person. Also, he's got a lot of time for people, and uh, I admire him so much. So, last question from the comments. I'm going to ask you one that's general. It's more about now that you've moved to England. Which Premier League football team do you support? Uh, we are mostly Man United fans over here. Oh, um, I'll probably get shot for this uh, from both sides because it's a tough one. All right, so I'm just going to come out the box and say it. So I was a I was a West Ham supporter uh, up until probably about two weeks ago, and then I confessed that I've come out the closet, and uh, I'm now a I'm now a Liverpool fan. Sorry for your Man United fans. <laughs> um, I try to I try to make the decision before um, they have the opportunity to win the league because otherwise I'll be classed as a glory fan, which I would not like to be classed as. Um, but go ahead, go make your go make your comments. I don't care. 
So yes, I'm a, I'm a Reds fan, and uh, I think if my uh-huh. brother does uh-huh. listen, if my brother does listen to this, I think he will be very happy to hear that. So it's the first time that I've confessed that. So you are very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, um, this your goals in the future? Yeah, it's a ooh, that's a tough one. Um, my goal is to play international cricket. And I would love to end my career with a ICC Test Championship. Uh, if I do have the opportunity to play for England, I'd love to win an Ashes home and away. I'd love to win a World Cup, 50 over World Cup and a T20 World Cup. So um, that's from a team's perspective. And um, I'd love to see myself as uh, the number one batsman in ODI rankings one day uh, it's it's a very it's a very far goal at the moment but um, you know as as many people have said before you know it's it can change very quickly and you just got to believe it so uh, yeah I'd say that's pretty much uh, a brief brief overview and so thanks a lot Lewis, for coming on the show uh, I enjoyed learning more about you and etc and learning about the difference between obviously being England and South Africa and your South African days you told me some epic stories about your days when you were at high school etc lastly I just want you to just give a quick message to the Cricket Fanatics fans um, out there um, and that's it yeah I just want to say thank you so much for everyone tuning in um, to this on lockdown show um, it's really appreciated, you know, the, the people out there, the, the, the professional cricketers can't tell you enough how much we really enjoy and um, treasure um, the time that you put into cricket. Um, so it's, it's you that keep us, uh, keeps us going um, and we really just uh, appreciate it. Go well and stay safe. I really do hope that you guys get out of the lockdown as soon as possible. Cool. Thanks a lot, Lewis, and I'll speak to you again soon.